From his secret hideaway in a South American jungle, Jose Lantigua did something probably no other person on the planet could do. He read his own obituary. I started bawling because we'd only been married for a short time. Jose Lantigua says he died, but he's the dead man talking. He says mad cow disease killed him, or so he wanted his life insurance company to believe. This is a very unique insurance fraud because in order to accomplish this and be a success, one has to cut their ties and basically be a lone wolf for the rest of their lives and say goodbye to their family and loved ones. And that's a hard thing to do, if not almost impossible. The feds say Jose faked his own death, paying off local Venezuelans to create a paper trail and even conning his wife Daphne into helping him pull off the scam. And how long did this lie go on for? Way too long, a long time. That was the hardest, having to lie to my kids, my family, but I thought I was protecting them. Protecting them, she was led to think, from a Mexican drug lord with revenge on his mind. You think that's how he manipulated you? Oh, I'm sure. He knew how much family meant to me and how much I loved my children and my grandchildren. And what Daphne did next sounds like a plot out of a hit thriller. We then learn Daphne travels to the Bahamas on a carnival cruise line that leaves out of Jacksonville. It leaves here twice a week. She carried money, she met with Lantigua, and Daphne then returns back on the cruise ship. The Bahamas, how was that part of the plan? He had been telling me that he wanted me to come and see him in the Bahamas. He wanted, he'd missed me, he wanted to see me. He said, you know, just come for a week so we can be together. And at this time, I'm madly in love with him, still not realizing what he had been doing. Even though Daphne insisted she wasn't in on any scam, she immediately filed the claims on Jose's policy after returning to the United States. That's when insurance adjusters smelled a rat. The beneficiaries are saying, pay up. And the insurance company is saying, you haven't proved that your dad is dead. The only proof Jose died, this official looking Venezuelan death certificate. But suspicious insurance fraud investigators dove into the thick of the jungle in search of the truth. The first red flag that we had was the fact that Mr. Lantigua was an apparently a, an affluent individual, had actually traveled to Venezuela, a country that was in, basically in a, a civil war to obtain medical treatment. The clues Richard Marquez and his PIs found laid out like breadcrumbs in a fractured fairy tale. Another red flag that we, we noticed immediately was that he had allegedly passed away in a very small town in a remote location approximately two hours away from Caracas, and we thought that was very suspicious. Uh, once we arrived in the town, uh, we found out that he was allegedly staying at a lodge that had not been in operation for several years. Of course, Jose had no clue they were hot on the trail of his cold body. His forged death documents decomposing like a fake corpse in the humid Venezuelan heat. He dies in location A, and it's five days later is when he's cremated. A body in five days in the heat in Venezuela would not be a good sight. It would blow and it would smell. Investigators are told that Lantigua's body was driven 250 miles from where he supposedly died to a crematorium in another town. One more red flag, given there were dozens of crematoriums closer. The cremation manager initially told us that he had in fact cremated the body. After a couple days of intervie interviewing him and pointing out some discrepancies, he had no recourse but to tell us the truth that uh, he had, in fact, never received the body. He had never, in fact, cremated the body. That he had swept the floor of some ashes and debris, put it in an urn, and shipped it to the uh, family, to the wife. And then the first tangible clue that Jose Lantigua is, in fact, alive. Remember that death certificate? Investigators discover 
it was also fraudulent. It's identified somewhat easily by somebody that knows what they're looking for. And that's because they didn't have a notary process. There's a number on the documents, and it has to correspond to a notary's book. They go to try to find where no the notary's book is. There isn't one. They start doing more interviews. And what they're able to establish is he isn't dead. Jose's elaborate plan was about to topple like a house of cards. We can only hit people with one thing, the facts. And the facts never lie. The agents tracked down the doctor who signed the bogus death certificate. He threw us out of his office several times, but we kept going back and ultimately told us, hey, listen, okay, so the truth is, I never saw this person, I have never met him before, I never examined him, and the funeral home people, as a favor, asked me to sign the death certificate, but I have never met this person. Back in the States, Daphne says she was still haunted by the specter of the drug cartel. At this point, do you think that there are people following you? Oh, yeah. I was always so paranoid because he told me, you know, you got to watch out. Every time I'm driving, I'm looking in the mirrors thinking, is somebody following me? Meanwhile, attorneys from both sides were battling it out over the $8 million payout. They file a motion in federal court here in Jacksonville for a declaratory judgment finding that the insurance companies don't have to pay the insurance because he's not dead. They haven't provided sufficient proof of death. And so at that point in time, we know or have firm evidence, really, that he's not dead. Now the question is, where is he? But no one really knows where the fully alive, slippery scam artist is hiding. Coming up, Jose thinks he's pulled off the white collar crime of the century. And so the hunt was on. He makes a dreadful mistake. And what he does next will shock everyone.